with another episode of Let's Play. I'm here with my buddy Jan, and we're going to be doing Horizon Wars today. So Horizon Wars is a new game um, from Osprey, who brought you Frostgrave, and it's a it's in the same sort of theme. So it's not definitely anything like Frostgrave. It's not wizards or sorcerers and swords and bears and skeletons and stuff like that. It's uh, not high fantasy. It's sci-fi, and it's more gritty, hard sci-fi than it is space aliens and, and, and monsters kind of sci-fi. And it's got a huge focus on combined arms and mechs. But the reason I say it's like Frostgrave is it's a use any minis you want game. So it's just a rule book um, and it lets you design, plan, and build any kind of force you want between six millimeter and 15 millimeter um, and play with it on the tabletop. So if you have mech miniatures lying around, tank miniatures, aircraft, helicopters, infantry, robots, whatever, this is the perfect game for you. Because a lot like Frostgrave, it lets you dust off miniatures you might not like have a game for right now or even be playing to play a game with um, and get some more use of them. So I could have used my existing armies. Like I have a heavy gear army. It's all painted with all the stuff in it. It's got tanks. It's got infantry. It's got all that stuff. But like I do, I used an excuse to paint some new stuff and I painted up some stuff from Robotech Tactics. Um, Robotech Tactics, uh, if you haven't ever seen it, was by Palladium and they did a line of plastic styrene, uh, Zentradi and uh, United Earth Defense Force. So I painted up two armies and Jan and I are going to give it a go today with those um, and we made up rules for them we started out cards uh, and we're getting ready to play now Jan's also built a Gundam army yes yes a, a Gundam uh, wing and you have two big Gundams which yes. ones are they uh, the uh, Grimoire yep. and the uh, High Mock awesome yeah. so now what's cool is they're in scale with my Robotech stuff they're yeah. 1 1 44th so it's amazing how big those things are in comparison. And the rules let you cover that. You can take huge mechs against little mechs. And we're going to play that next week. So you're going to get to see a, a game next week where we actually play against Jan's army. But right now, we're going to show you the Robotech stuff. We're going to walk you through the basic mechanics of the game. So by no means is this going to be an awesome tutorial. This is more me and Jan learning the game. We've done one practice round to basically get ourselves ready for it. But you'll be learning with us, watching us stumble through the basic rules. What we have done a whole bunch of is statting out armies and understanding how the mechanics of putting together a collection to play it with work. So that's stuff you can learn from here. Um, we're going to walk through a set piece battle. There's two kinds of battles, but a set piece battle is basically a pre-generated scenario and we're going to be doing that one. It's called deliberate attack. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll show you how the ropes, we'll show you how it works. So I hope you enjoy this. Here's Horizon Wars by Osprey Games. So here's the basic kit to play Horizon Wars. In the middle here, we've got the rulebook, Horizon Wars. Um, if you've seen the Frostgrave rulebook, same scale, um, same quality, beautiful color components all through the inside. These are all Roby's miniatures uh, who wrote it, and some gorgeous art, as we kind of come to uh, you know expect from Osprey. They did a great job illustrating it. Um, and to walk you through the basics, the basic mechanics of the game um, use D12s. Uh, it's dice pool based, and uh, every model is its own squad called an element. Now those have four different stats. Presence, it's like your point value, and you typically determine your presence if you're a mech. For everything else, uh, or even aircraft actually, for everything else, um, there's a table that you would choose from for presence. And that's kind of your size, it's like your threat level on the table, and also the point cost you have in a game. Um, and then the force presence would dictate how fast a game you're going to play. So we're going to play for about 45 minutes, it's a 12 presence game. Seems about standard game size, 15's an hour. So you can really scale the game up and down as much as you want. Now most things go between one and three presents. So if you look at 12, if you were to take three big heavy mechs or four big heavy mechs, that could be your whole army. Whereas if you're going to take medium mechs, you could have six of them. If you're going to mix in infantry, they're usually about two presents too. So you're talking about between six and 12 models, even up to 25 here. If you were to take a bunch of heavy stuff, it's usually no more than 12 or 13 models. So have those numbers. That's how many models we're talking about here in a game. Um, Jan and I are both playing with six models, I think, on our sides, because we're playing a 12-point game right now. Um, and presence is the scalability of the game. So you can, you can go big and heavy. You can go lots of light stuff. And that kind of dictates the game size you'll be playing. Now the stats everything has, and you can see some stat cards here, some action tokens. Those are all homemade by me, but they're all available for download in the Facebook group. So you can go to um, the Horizon Wars Facebook page, uh, Roby admins it, so you can ask the author questions directly in there. And I've uploaded those for people to use. Now what they are, um, is they're a simple print and play. So I have blank ones in there, but what, what I did was I, just, I actually just edited them in, um, what is it, uh, Adobe, to, uh, to add in the numbers and stuff. And then once they were printed, I stuck them in some card sleeves and I can use dry erase markers to track all my damage. 
And I'll show you how those work in the actual game. But the four stats are movement, that's how far you move. Um, the firepower, which is how many dice you roll when you shoot. Your armor, that's the thing that gets, that's basically your wound count, that's how many wounds you have. If your armor or agility ever reduces to zero, you're destroyed. Um, but it also gets added to any uh, difficulties for shooting at you, so it's important that number is high. And your defense, and your defense is the number of dice you get to throw to try and cancel hits. Um, all of these numbers are subject to change though, because that's your attrition as well. The more damage you take, uh, the more those numbers go up and down. So it really does handle dynamic damage well. You can think of all those as hit locations, and they impact how well you're doing basically in the game. So even your infantry, who typically only have one armor agility, so if you critical hit them, they just all die. Um, they, they're fairly robust, because it could just be their firepower goes down. It represents the, like, the light machine gunner gets killed. You know what I mean? Like You don't just die immediately your quality goes down in game um, and it kind of affects your, your resources and how you play. Uh, the tokens are also available for download. Everybody gets two actions per turn um, and you can use them as reactions as well. So when you go down to one, you'd flip it over to one action uh, and that just tracks every model and how many actions they have remaining and it's a go back and forth kind of game. So uh, those are the basic sort of anatomy of a card and a person. I've already been through all this. Armor agility. Uh, everyone can see 180 unless they've done a move uh, called, uh, the, either they have a skill called alert, so all infantry have that skill. That means they can see 360 all the time. Or they've made a patrol move and a patrol move, sorry, a cautious move, and a cautious move allows them to see 360 for the remainder of that turn because they're basically looking around trying to be, you know, uh, sort of how you say, um, ca well, cautious, that would be <laughs> I mean, the word that we're trying to use. Oh man, I'm on fire tonight. Uh, and then that can be really important for reactions because you can only react to things you can see. So if you're not in the front 180, then you're, you're gonna be able to, to sneak up behind guys. And we actually, in our little test game, that became super relevant because one of my mechs got behind one of his mechs and it couldn't do anything. And I just got to light it up twice, which is pretty bad news. So there's two kinds of missions. There's confrontations, the, the, the section basically they're in gives you set piece back and those are predefined missions. You'd be used to them if you played games like 40K, where every mission has a theme and a story to it, but it describes how the game works, how much stuff you can start in the table, how much stuff you can bring in from reserve, how, what your victory conditions are, and there's adventures. I think this game is really gonna come into its own during adventures. Now, we're not, Jan and I are gonna, we're not ready for that yet. <laughs> we're not ready to forge the narrative. Um, we're gonna do adventures when we're a little more capable with the rules. We're gonna use some set piece battles to start off. But what they do is they give you a little bit like the old um, adventure table in the 40k Road Trader rulebook, a bunch of stories and narratives for your force. Is your force exhausted? Is your force on the offense or the defense? Are they fresh from the field? A and all of this adds together basically to, to build the story. And it's a super cool way of building up a, a game type and it means that every game is kind of unique. But we're going to get there later. We're going to start with set piece battles and move on to adventures later on. Um, the battlefield, you can play on any size you want. We're gonna play on four by four tonight. Um, and the mission, the game actually gives you a recommended table size and a recommended point size for that table. So we're gonna be doing patrol plus, which is um, the four by four table size. It seems like a good round number. It's usually about 12 uh, presents on the table. Uh, and that means that the game lasts roughly 45 minutes to an hour. So that felt good. Um, distances are all closest point to closest point, as per usual. Um, and terrain is all, you know, there's details for, for buildings and intact buildings and difficult terrain later, but it's all pretty standard. So the turn, um, I already described action tokens. Everybody gets issued an action token at the start of the turn. Then you can determine reserves. So now a lot of times your army doesn't start on the table. So the mission we're about to play, as the attacker, I get to start with six presence worth of guys on the table. And the defender basically just has his sentries. He has four presence worth of guys on the table. Now what's cool about that is um, every turn after the first, you get a reserve um, sort of like pool that you can pull in. So as the attacker, I can pull in two reserves per turn and you have to mark who they're gonna be with an action token. Now, when it's your turn to activate a model, they can come in for an action on my table edge. Um, if they have a rule like deep deployment, which is kind of like deep strike in 40K, they can be placed on the table as different markers and then join one of those markers. Um, and then during the turn, they can come on and actually impact the game. So um, the actions are, I go you, I would complete the action of a model completely and then pass play over to Jan. He'll get to complete with actions um, he has on a model and then we go back and forth. Y you can't pass play unless you have no models left to activate. So you are gonna be able, to, you're gonna have to activate all your models, but they can do nothing. You can issue them actually actions to just stand there and do nothing or to cautious move zero just so you can see 360. Um, and line of sight is super important because you can react for every action that happens in line of fire one of your models. So it is a pretty dynamic, you do always kind of feel involved in the game turn. Um, now, like I said, deep deployment is slightly different from reserves. Re reserves are usually a table edge. Deep deployment, the start of your turn before anyone activates, you place two action markers anywhere on the table. 
um, for each model deep deploying. So if I have two models deep deploying, I'd place four, and when they arrive, they can arrive on any of those. So you, don't, you have to plan where they could show up, but they don't have to pick which one it's gonna be until they do. So things like airdropping troops, um, airdropping in mechs, if you have mechs that can airdrop, stuff like that, uh, can be really interesting and dynamic in the game turn, because guys can just show up and shoot you in the rear. Um, I went through actions and reactions. I'm gonna give you the basic uh, list here and then we're gonna jump into the, the mission. You can move, you can shoot, you can move and shoot, which means you can make a patrol move. So a move is either cautious, patrol, or rapid. So a move is, um, if it's cautious, just your movement value. So to give you an example for this uh, reconnaissance battle pod, he could move four inches cautiously. He could patrol, so move twice his movement. Um, if he wanted to move, um, you know, sort of like a standard move. And rapid, he could move three times, but he cannot shoot that turn. So he'd go 12 inches and he would not get to fire his gun at all. Now, if he wants to move and shoot, um, he could move a patrol move and then shoot with half his firepower. And it almost seems like if you're gonna have someone in line of fire, that's the order you do almost all the time. So you're just not gonna waste those dice. It's like free dice to try and throw at somebody. Uh, now shoot is a separate order. So you could move and then shoot. You shoot with your full firepower at something in your line of sight. Um, and we'll go through the shooting mechanic real quick in a second. Um, but it's fairly simple. What's interesting about this one is there's no target numbers. There's just your agility and armor, and they can either represent how heavy you are and hard to damage, or how agile you are and how easy it is for you to get out of the way. And then there's your range and cover. So if you um, want to shoot somebody, you measure how many inches away they are. That's your target number to hit. You would add your agility or armor to it. So let's say it's agility and armor three here, and I'm 12 inches away. I need 17s to hit. Um, if I was in cover, uh, partially, so up to 25%, it would be plus one, so it would be 18. If I was in full cover, so more than 20, or more than half, it would be plus three. Uh, there's other things too, like dig in for infantry, they can affect that, but it basically gives you a target number. So let's say, in the open, shooting 12 inches away, I need 17s to hit, I'd roll my whole firepower. Now the scout pod has a crappy firepower of one, which means he's not hitting anybody outside of 12 inches, because he, he can't even roll at 12. But let's say it's someone different, like this tactical battle pod with a firepower of four, I would roll four dice, four d12s. I would get a total of five, three, four, and 11. And then that target would get to roll its defense dice. Let's see if it has two defense dice and try and cancel it. Now the way that you cancel a dice is if you roll the exact number rolled, you can cancel one. So we got one four here and that would knock this four out from the pool. The eight wouldn't cancel any and that would go away. And every time you can make a pairing of dice, uh, any number of dice that add up to your target number, that's a hit. Uh, so an 11, a 3, and a 5 adds up to 19. That's one successful hit at that range. And my opponent would have to apply damage. Now damage is applied anywhere my opponent wants. Uh, first you hit your damage tracker here at the bottom with a point. So a model's taking a damage point. That damage point means um, basically how difficult it is to repair itself later on. So that tracker gets bigger the more damage it takes. And then he selects an attribute to reduce by one. So let's say he's not so concerned about moving, he'll reduce his movement down to three. And that means now he can only move three inches per turn. If these stats start to get to zero, if your defense gets to zero, you don't roll any defense dice anymore when someone shoots at you. If your firepower goes to zero, you can't shoot. If your movement goes to zero, you can't move. But if your armor and agility go to zero, you're dead. You're destroyed. Now let's say one of these dice I rolled was a 12. Any pool that contains a 12, I get to say where the hit goes. That means that hit almost always is, is gonna go on your armor and agility because I'm gonna try and reduce it to try and kill you. So that's the basics of shooting. There's some other stuff that can come into there, special rules and stuff in play, but don't worry about it too much because it'll only happen if you have that special rule. Um, and that's the basics of shooting and damage. Uh, move and shoot, like I said, half range. Now charging is interesting because charging is all based on your presence. So you're moving your charging element uh, to up to one inch away. So if you're within one inch, then you're, you're charging, you're in base. Um, or a countering element too, because you can do it as a reaction as well. All enemy reactions are then resolved, so an uh, eligible enemy may react to a charge even if it's the second action and activation, so you can try and shoot them on the way in, and you can react to something at any point during its move. So you can actually kill someone before they make contact for their charge too, which is pretty huge. Um, and then if it's able to charge out when it completes its move, it gets the final inch in there, and then you resolve your charge. So resolving the charge, um, to resolve a charge, each commander rolls a number of dice equal to their presence. So let's say my presence one uh, battle pod was fighting a presence two destroyed. So here's a destroid from the, the Robotech um, uh, UEDF. Uh, he would roll a dice for the presence. So it would be two presence dice for the charging 
um, or scout pod, and then sorry, one for the charging scout pod because he's presence one, two for the uh, death droid. Uh, for every die showing the same value, sorry, uh, the result is then modified as follows. You know your highest result, so a nine and a six. Um, for every double you get, you get plus one. If the element moved but less than four, you get plus one. If the element moved four more, you get plus two. So the further you move to get into the assault, the, the more your impact it basically is. And uh, each element then takes an amount of damage equal to half the opponent's total rounding down. So you both take damage. So uh, let's say in this case, the destroyed got a nine. It would take four damage rounding down. It would take three damage back because um, it would get a total of six. Uh, and that's it. Um, then they're moved one inch apart and you resolve any action tokens remaining on either element. So it, it basically is just you crushing into each other and both taking damage. You can, you can really not want to do it if you're not suitable. If you're not, if you're not good at charging, uh, then charges can be very, very terrifying. <laughs> now, that being said, certain things. Infantry elements can't add more than one to their assault roll for any reason, because they're not big. Uh, mechs and vehicles can't counter charge. Mechs and vehicles, um, any charge involving just mechs and or just vehicles is resolved as above. Infantry charging infantry, um, but whichever element loses is just dead. So there's no damage applied there. If your infantry gets killed, you're just slaughtered. So if you lose the side, you, you die. Um, infantry charges the mech or vehicle. The infantry element wins the assault roll. The mech or vehicle is destroyed. Uh, the infantry element halves the amount of damage it takes, rounding up. So infantry going after mechs, it's not very likely they're going to win because they're usually P2. But if they do win, you're just dead because they climb inside you or like detonate your kneecaps or like whatever it is. So infantry can be really terrifying to mechs. Um, and then mechs and vehicles charging infantry. If you win the assault roll, the infantry are um, also just dead. Sorry, where is it? Uh, theory wins the assault roll, immediately resolve the combat. Again, sorry, mech vehicle charges infantry. If results are equal, move the mech an additional one inch along its line of charge. The action's over. If the mech vehicle wins the assault, um, move an additional one inch along the line of its charge and remove the infantry element. Yeah, because you just keep moving through and then you take your damage as normal. Finally, you can do nothing and you can recover. If you try and recover, you roll a number of dice equal to your P stat and you have to roll higher than your current damage total. And for every success you would get, um, you can reduce one of your effective damage things by one. So um, you uh, get equal to or higher for every dice. So uh, you can only really repair one stat if you're only presence one. But if both your dice are higher than your current damage total on a P2 mech, you can repair two damage things. So it's you like effectively try to bring your systems back online, put ammo back in your guns, all that stuff. Uh, and that's it. So reactions, you can't do all the skills as reactions. You can move, you can shoot, you can move and shoot, or you can counter charge. And those things are all super important because um, if you get lit up, it might be best just to hide behind a building. So moving in reaction, we found, was a really big deal. Uh, moving and shooting, you can do that too. You, it, actually, I would almost always say it's always better to move and shoot because then you're getting a free shot on the way back as long as you have a functioning gun. Um, and then counter charge, if you do get assaulted, it might be worthwhile for you to do that, especially if you're infantry and you could just kill a mech. Um, and all these can be done if uh, something takes an action in your uh, line of fire uh, while you still have action tokens remaining. Now you can only react once per turn uh, and that's it. So, so you, you don't get to do two both your actions reactions, only one of them can ever get peeled off that way. And then finally, like I said earlier, damage, zero stats, movement zero, can't move, uh, fire, fire firepower zero, you can't shoot. Uh, if your armor agility is zero, you're destroyed, you're just dead. Critical hits get applied wherever your opponent wants, supposed to you. And this is one super important, overkill. Um, if an enemy element is hit um, and has action tokens remaining, remove one token from the element for every hit it suffers in excess of its P. So if you were P2, if you took three hits, you would then um, remove an action. So you can actually stun guys and take actions at the more you hit them. Now this section aircraft, we are not gonna play with because it adds a whole other dimension to the game. I'm super excited about that dimension, but it is a, a separate layer of rules that we're not gonna try and digest today. So look for aircraft in future games. Um, we're gonna skip that section for now just to keep it nice and simple um, and keep it sort of onto the regular stuff. So terrain then, um, terrain has different categories. Um, and they're all basically category one, category two, category three. Um, category one terrain is any shape of size of terrain that is impenetrable, uh, indestructible, and impenetrable. So giant mountains. Uh, <laughs> category two, um, it's almost the same, but you could get on top of it. So things like hills, uh, you know, graded hills, plateaus, forests, or ruins, they could be entered into. Intact buildings would also be category two because they can be like, put into. 
Um, and they can actually be destroyed as well, which is kind of neat. You can blow them up. Uh, swamps, hard roads, stuff like that. Category three would be special terrain. So things like um, a uh, missile silo, a uh, landing pad, command centers. It even gives you some examples here. Protected site, command centers. They get used for scenarios and stuff like that. Technological artifact. Um, and they all have tags like difficult, so hard to move in through. Uh, hazardous, impenetrable, so you can't go inside of it at all. Uh, impregnable, which means it can't be booby trapped, mined, or otherwise made hazardous. Indestructible, it can't be blown up by any kind of in game effect. Or treacherous, if you move through it, it could be dangerous and could actually hurt you. Um, and that's it. So, the last thing we're going to talk about before we're going to jump into the game um, and talk about the scenario is mustering. So, um, that's building your army. We've built two armies here a Robotech army um, for the Zentradi and a Robotech army for the United Earth Defense Force. Um, and you can choose anything you want to be in your army. I think that's the super cool thing about this, up to your presence. Uh, but the one thing you do have to choose is a Command HQ. Now, sorry, you don't have to take a Command HQ. But you, if you do, you can get bonuses. And you typically only get bonuses if your command HQ is conventional. So if it is infantry, a tank, uh, 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 what is it, uh, a ground vehicle, special forces, stuff like that, they give you bonuses to have the same type of stuff. So like, let's say I took airborne paratroopers as my command HQ, I would get a rebate typically on having other stands of airborne infantry in there because I'm theming my force. Now, I'm not doing that. We have mech command HQs. Um, it's a free upgrade that one of your mechs can have. And that means that we don't get any extra bonus for it because we're playing with mechs, we're playing with giant robots. But it can be interesting when you make your army um, picking a command HQ that's conventional. And then this is all the different conventional stuff. Now, it's statted out for you. Um, you can take, uh, where is it? Light infantry, mobile infantry, so guys on things like motorcycles or, or like, you know, little uh, cavalry, even guys on horseback. Heavy infantry, so heavy infantry could be things like. Um, guys in power suits, dudes in like loaders, power loaders, stuff like that. Uh, airborne infantry, so guys who are trained to jump out of helicopters or you know do halo jumps and stuff and can deep deploy. Special forces, who are actually presence three infantry, and they're just good at everything. So yeah, don't mess with special forces, they're terrifying. Light cavalry, so things like light reconnaissance vehicles, um, dudes on, uh, you know, like the Warthog from Halo, that kind of thing. Heavy cavalry, so tanks, right? That would be things like the Scorpion from Halo, so some kind of big, large, uh, you know, main battle tank. Heavy cavalry um, also has the light artillery and armored artillery thing. So light artillery would be, let's say, the Warthog with the grenade launcher. Armored artillery would be um, a huge mechanized gun, so a rail system that can move around and fire. And then finally, recon. And recon, again, they don't define what these are, so you can use whatever miniatures you want. Recon could be drones. It could be a swarm of drones. It could be um, a bunch of guys in ghillie suits. It could be whatever you want it to be. Um, and again, even making your stands and base sizes, they don't, they, don't make, they don't make you choose and make it any way that you want. They just give you general rules for it. Um, so you're basing how many guys are on a stand. Don't worry about that. Make it however you want. Even the scale, it doesn't matter. Uh, with this kind of game, you'll be able to use whatever you want to use. So there are special rules here for guide fire. Um, that's the thing that the command HQ can do. He can call in artillery. So if you have a, an element in your army that's artillery, for instance, from the conventional troop types, or say you give a mech something with guided fire so he can bring in rockets or some kind of artillery choice, you can call it in with your CHQ. Um, and then he has the chain of command thing. It may spend its first activation to allow any other friendly element that's not been activated this turn to perform an additional action without spending an action itself. So that's pretty huge. So for instance, my scout has that. To represent the fact that he's scouting the enemy, this little scout dude right here, he has the CHQ rule. Um, and he's not actually in charge, uh, you know, story-wise, but his, his scouting, we're going to give him the ability to give other people intel, basically, and use that chain of command. Guide fire 2 makes sense for him, too. He can call in artillery strikes. Um, and then on top of that, uh, you can take force without a CHQ, obviously, I already talked about that, and then we get to mechs. Now, mechs are super cool. If you look here, all of these stats for the mechs that I have are made up, and the reason I made them up is you get given a pool of points. So a P3 mech, a presence 3 mech, 3 points basically, he can allocate 17 points to his stats. You have to give one to at least each, like to each stat basically, but you can put them wherever you want to represent how heavy your firepower is, how fast you are, how heavily armored you are, how good you are at defending against incoming attacks. You design your own mechs and you design how big they are. Going down to light, which is one, they can allocate 11 points, mediums are 14 points, and heavies are 17. They can also buy skills with them. So all these weapon upgrades, things like assisted targeting, extended range, assassin strike, 
all of these represent what you're armed with. So you don't get to buy guys specific weapons. What you do instead is you give them traits that allow them to represent that. So like for instance, assassin strike would represent something like a rail gun, a huge um, sniper laser, something that doesn't have a high rate of fire, but if it, hit, if it hits you like dead on, does a ton of damage. And the way that works is, no matter how many hits you roll with your firepower test, you only ever cause one hit unless it's a critical and then it does double damage, which is huge because you can just knock out enemy mechs, enemy things like in one shot basically with that. So it, it's cool because you can theme your mechs and give them abilities to represent their weapon loadouts um, by, by, by buying these basically and they all cost points from your, your pool of points to make your guys. Now there are rules for super mechs. They only go to P3 up there, but if you want to play and you're going to see some super mechs, we're, we're playing them as P3, but Jan's mechs are huge. And when you see the game that we do after this one, um, in a week or so, you're going to see some super mechs. They are ginormous because they're Gundams, right? They're like 140, 144 Gundams. The guy is like sitting in a room in its head, whereas my guys are in airplanes that happen to turn into robots. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be a very different scale. And they do give you rules for doing that um, and going as big as you want. Um, and then that's it. And then the rules for all the conventional force airborne, special infantry, all that stuff. Um, they can take upgrades too to make them cooler. Uh, and then you get your aircraft. Aircraft are a lot like mechs. You assign points to them to make them the way they are. But again, we're going to play with the aircraft in the future, so don't worry about them too much now. And then finally, confrontations. Um, these give you all of these basic points. How big a force you're going to take, what your table size is, how you're going to deploy, what kind of terrain can be on the table, and then finally, how you're going to win. Um, and we're going to start with this set piece battle right here. And this is the best place to start or stop the run through the rulebook, which is deliberate attack. So now, here's a cool thing we don't even deploy the terrain. Um, until we actually start our set piece battle. We deploy our terrain as part of setting up the game. So in this one, you can see here, this is your game size and your table size. We're gonna be doing a patrol plus, so a four by four table, 12 points. Um, the advanced uh, units we have to put on the table, we, I have to deploy six presents. He can deploy f uh, four presents as uh, sentries. And then reserves, I get six in reserve and he gets 10 potentially in reserve to bring on afterwards. Uh, and that's the total basically um, game size that we have. Now the 10 allowed, he can only have 12 points deployed ever, but he could pick 10 points for the stuff to deploy as his option. So it doesn't have to be all the same stuff. Um, that means if we happen to have a model that gets destroyed, he wants to bring it back on if he had, if he didn't have two models, but he wanted to deploy that guy twice in his reserve pool, he could and then bring him on later on. Now, um, there are deployment zones. I pick one table quarter, and then an adjacent table quarter is my zone. And I only get to deploy the scenery in my home table quarter. Jan gets to deploy the scenery everywhere else. He's gonna be the defender as the UDDF. Um, then, uh, I deploy my six presents worth of guys here. He deploys his two uh, little um, sentries, basically, anywhere in his deployment zone. And it has to be in this no man's land, so it can't be within six of the edge. I mean, it has to be across here. And every turn after the first, I can bring in two reserved units and he can only bring in one. Now he can bring in two um, provided, where is it? The defender may place uh, their advanced force and where is it? Um, there's a special rule there. You get one per turn as long as there's at least one hidden enemy element in the battlefield, one element commander per turn. If you have no hidden elements, then you get two per turn. That's what it is. So yeah, if you hide from me, um, which is a special rule, you can be deployed hidden. Uh, you deploy markers instead of deploying guys. You can uh, you can get two or one reserve. But if you just choose to be ballsy and go out in the open, which we did last game, you would get two per turn as well. Um, now the way that we win is, uh, if at the end of any turn after the first, the defender has two or fewer effective elements to the table, I win. So I have to kill you down to two elements. Uh, if at the end of any turn, the defender has at least four elements in the table with a combined P of twice out of the starting advance force or more, the defender wins. So if you ever have 12 P with a guy on the table, you win. That's right, because my advanced force is, oh no, sorry, if your advanced force, if you ever if you have eight on the table, then you win, because your advance is only four. So we're going to get set up now, um, we're going to deploy our terrain, uh, deploy our starting forces, we'll show you the dispositions, and then we're going to get started. So here's my attacking evil Zentradi. Um, this is my advanced force right here. It's going to be three tactical battle pods, they're all presence two, uh, movement four, firepower four, armor three, and defense two, and they all have assisted targeting. So what assisted targeting means is they can reroll one firepower dice per shoot action, which is pretty super cool. To get a low dice, make it a high dice potentially. My reserves, I have an officer battle pod. Um, and he is attached to these three pods and also the reconnaissance pod with his squadron commander rule. That means that he can do, um, 
a single action to pull guys within three inches into the same action. So if he's within three inches of a bunch of, of other pods, he can make them all shoot the same target and uh, Jan only gets to react after that's all resolved. So you can kind of call in an alpha strike. He also has assistant targeting um, and he's got extended range short. Now extended range reduces the effective range to him by six if it's short. So that means that all ranges are reduced by six. I had to pay a bunch for that, but it makes him really good at shooting at range. Um, we got a scout pod. He has the extended range ability to, oh, sorry, that's the artillery pod, wrong card. Whoop. Reconnaissance battle pod. He has um, CHQ, so that lets him do the guided strike and also give an action to somebody else. And then jump jets, so he can move over stuff his height. And then my our heavy artillery battle pod, all he has is medium extended range, so minus 12 inches to all ranges from him. And that's my 12 presents worth of Zentradi that are assaulting this derelict ruined city. Here's the United Earth Defense Force. We have two Destroids, Spartans. Um, there's a gun pod one here and a melee one. And these are our sentries. So these are gonna be deployed in the no man's land and trying to hold off my Zentradi until reinforcements can arrive. And then they um, are both presents too. Uh, you can see the gun pod one has a firepower of five. It's got an extra equipment piece. Movement three, armor three, and defense three. So they're really robust. No special rules at all. Um, they're just basically there to, to chip away damage and put out lots of guns. Then the other one, the um, melee version, is equipped for melee. So his firepower is a little bit lower, but he has the assault rig rule, which means when he charges, he counts as presence three. So he rolls three dice on the charge, which is pretty awesome. Then we've got our reinforcements. We have two air or air dropping troops. We have a Guardian uh, mode Valkyrie VF1 mech. And what it gets is jump jets and drop frame. So that allows you to deploy um, anywhere on the table when it deploys as a reserve um, and put down two spots. And then a, U a UEDF airborne infantry squad, which is infantry, which means it counts infantry for assaulting mechs and stuff. Has dig in as an action, they can make everything three harder to hit them. So they dig into a building and they will be plus six inches of range to anything attacking them. Um, and then finally they have deep deployment alert. They always have 360 vision, which is pretty huge. Uh, and yeah, both P2. Then finally we have a Valkyrie VF1 in battleoid mode, so he's on foot. Uh, now there are rules coming for transformal mechs. I believe they've actually already been put out. So when you see this, go to the Facebook page. Roby has published uh, transforming mechs. The problem is all of my uh, Valkyries have to be P3 because you can only have a, a mode for every um, presence that you have, which would make them all crazy expensive. So I'm playing them all just in fixed mode right now because it means I can use different Valkyries and I think that's cool too. Um, he has agile frame, which means everyone is minus one firepower to shoot him because he's more agile than the battle pods are and he has a small profile. Uh, he's presence two, movement three, firepower three, armor uh, agility three, and defense four. So he's relatively hard to hit. Then we've got the Destroid Phalanx, um, and this one's got Reflex Missiles, which gives it Assassin Strike, which is huge, um, and Extended Range Medium. So it is a standoff and fire missile boat. It's only movement two, but it's firepower five, defense one, and armor agility three. So it's not, it, it'll soak up some damage. It's not great at defending itself, but man, if it shoots you, it is gonna hit you like a ton of bricks, which is pretty huge. Um, if it gets a, a critical in there and lands a blow. So there's the 12 presence worth of United Earth Defense Force, the, the reserves coming in to rescue, and then of course the two sundries here, the two Spartans, will start on the table. And here's our table set up. Um, we've got a cool desert theme here. This looks like a nuclear test site or a city that's been destroyed earlier in the war. Um, I got some buildings here by Impudent Mortal. These are all 10 mil range, um, but they fit perfectly for the scale that we're doing, 1 144th. Um, I got some scenery. Uh, it's just some like spires and rock spires and stuff. Whatever this is, it's a wasteland now. And then a, a mat here by Urban Mats. So some cool sort of like post-apocalyptic looking scenery. Fits the Robotech theme because apparently every war in Robotech took place in a weird desert with a ruined city around. <laughs> so I, I basically made it for my Robotech theme. Um, so now this is my side over here. I'm gonna have to deploy my attackers within six inches of this edge, and then Jan's gonna deploy his defenders. So here's my assault force deployed. I've got battle pod A, B, and C um, all deployed here. Now you can see I've got my cards all numbered or lettered A, B, and C. And when someone activates, I'll tap it so I know who has activated and who hasn't. Because even if you have no actions left, you can actually still, you have to activate, it's mandatory. Um, now the defenders, we've got one of the Spartans hidden back here. And then the melee Spartan hidden beside him is kind of a trap. Now neither are hidden deploying and that means that Jan's gonna get two reserve units per turn just like myself. And we're moving into turn one. Now my reserve units, officer pods, um, I can't do this turn one, but recon pod and artillery pod. Turn two and on, they'll be able to be summoned in. And you've of course got your VH1, or sorry, VF1 in uh, Guardian, in Battleoid, your Destroid, and your Airborne Infantry. So we put our action tokens as our first step of the turn. Everybody's gonna get two actions. 
Whoop, so we know who's got what left. It's off, high roll for initiative for turn one. Seven to two, it's gonna be me. So we're gonna start off, as we mean to carry on, um, with one action on this fella. And I'm not super into getting shot a whole bunch coming into the guy in cover. So we're gonna make rapid moves here, which means I can't shoot this turn, but I can move 12 each move. So we're gonna go eight to here. I'm pretty sure I can stay the line of fire of that death droid. Whoop. And then four more. And even if he tries to shoot me, the range is going to be so crazy high, I'm pretty sure he's not going to hit. So there's my end of my move. Now you can reaction fire, because he can see me behind that cover over there if you want to. Gonna, not going to chance it, and then I'm going to go again, second action. We're going to rapid move again. Uh, so eight, and then four more, and we're going to come around this corner, like smack C. All right, so it's over to you now. You can activate one of your Spartans. So the melee Spartans. Spartan is yep. going to patrol move. Okay, so that means a double move. Double move is going to move. Uh, and he could fire if you want to, if you want well, to patrol move fire. Shoot Might as well, yeah. yeah so I have no actions left, so I'm not snap firing at you. So he's going to move this way, and he's just going to end up right there. Okay, so he can see me, and that's going to let him shoot me with two dice, because he rounds up his firepower of three. Oh, of four, that's right, yeah. Yep. That's four goes to two. So now range is going to be, it looks like about 15. 15, yeah. Yep. Plus my defense, or sorry, my armor and agility of three. So you need an eight. 18 to hit here with two dice. So to add up to 18. Uh, does not quite. I'll still roll my defense dice. If I cancel anything, I'm defense two. Uh, I do cancel the six, which means you only have a total of seven in the pool, which doesn't hit 18, which means you miss. Well, on odds, but it, you might as well. Like, you know what I mean? If you're gonna patrol move, you get the patrol move either way. There's no sense in not taking a shot. So you're gonna go again? Yeah, he's gonna take a second shot. Okay, just stand, just stand. full firepower now, yeah. Yes. And he still needs 18s, but he's got four dice to do it. That'll oh. do. All right, so he's gonna get at least one there, unless I can cancel some of these with my two defense dice. Double five, doesn't cancel nope. anything. So your pool is going to be an 18. Yes. And then an 11. So that's not gonna do anything, but I'll apply one hit. So I misspoke earlier, that's actually guy B. Um, so I have to put one hit here. I'm not super into dropping my defense or my firepower right now. I'm gonna drop my movement down. I'm gonna make him a little harder to move. Whoops, down to three and put a damage point on him. Using left-handed three there, you guys can enjoy that. <laughs> Jen's laughing at my left-handed drawing. All right, so it's back over to me now. This guy's activated out. Um, I've got two battle pods left to try and assault this position with. And I'm trying to decide if I want to get shot now or shot later. I think at this point, it's best for me to try and go after somebody that, uh, if I cross this gap, he's gonna see me. Right now, he can see me. So no matter what I do, I could potentially be shot here. I'm gonna rapid move with this fella. Uh, no, I'm just gonna patrol move actually. I'm gonna patrol move because I do wanna shoot again later on. So I'm gonna move eight and head to here. So that will put me out of line of fire at the end of my move it looks like. Whoop, but you can shoot me across the gap. Yeah. Gonna bother, all right, he's got other plans, not gonna do it. Uh, and then my second one, I'm gonna move and fire. So I'm gonna move eight to here is my second action. And I'll get half firepower against that Spartan in the open. It's gonna give me two dice. Can you check range for me there? It looks like about 17, and I'm good at eyeballing distances, but let's let's use this thing called a tape measure. 18, 16, 16, 16. Oh, that's close. Um, so plus 16 plus three, three is 19. So I get two dice trying to hit a 19 here. Let's see if I can do it. Not a, not a one, not a, not a chance. Do you, last Spartan. Yeah, so he's going to patrol move as well. Okay. Yep. A patrol move because he can. Uh, that's his first action. Yep, yeah, going and six. He can see me. He can. I am not going to try and shoot you because you're way far away. I forgot my assisted fire there. <laughs> it didn't matter. I can't be rolling on my fire dice. And then he's going to move and shoot. Move uh, shoot this guy? This guy. Okay, so moving around the corner. He's going to move here, around there. And he's going to face this way so you can see both. Sounds good. Shooting, you're going to get two dice. No, three dice actually because you have five halved running up. And I'm defense of two, so I get two dice in return. Arm, armor and agility of three. So you're gonna be 16 um, plus my armor and agility of three is 19s you need here with three dice. Nope, not quite. Uh, I can defend. I will cancel <laughs> the six. So you get a total of four, which is no pool events. <laughs> All right, well, back over to me then. Um, I'm not gonna bother shooting. I'm gonna rapid move and go 12 in my first move with this guy because nobody can see me. So it's gonna be eight to there. Oops. And then we're gonna go four more and move ourselves over here. We just need to be in a good position for next turn. Because reserves are gonna start coming on. So second action. Uh, again, no one can see me. We're gonna go 12 again. I'm gonna go eight up to here. I get four more. 
And that's going to take us to here. This ends turn one. So reserves can start coming on this turn. Um, and that means that we need to start placing tokens next to our reserve units. So I'm going to go with you and you. Jan deciding that two of his um, airdropping units are going to be placed. And that means he actually gets four action tokens to put on the table. So there's going to be one here. One here, one over here, and one over here. And when he decides he wants to bring an air troop in, so either his guardian mode VF1 or his air, airborne infantry, he can place them next to any of these tokens during the drop. So all these are potential drop sites for those units. Two, and we're gonna make the initiative roll to see who's going first. It's gonna be you. First action, he's gonna flip over an action token to one and put a guardian VF1 next to it at a line of fire. All right, his next action. He's going to move and shoot. Okay. He's going to peer out just to appear out Whoa. ever so slightly. Yep. Covered by his friends. Yes. And then fire. Okay, firing over here. Looks like 12 and a half, so 13, 13. plus one because I'm in partial cover. Yep. So that's gonna be 14 stains because I'm armor three. Nice. Looking for 17. Oh man! Okay, I got two defense dice. Oh. oh, so I cancel the 11 and that's gonna drop it below 17, which means no hit. Right, so he's activated out, it's back over to me and I'm going to, I think, light you up, son. Uh, so we're gonna activate this guy and he's just gonna fire into the back of the gun part Spartan. You're no reaction fire because he does not have anyone in line of fire at me. Four dice, rerolling one with assisted fire. Check the range for me, it looks like 13 inches. No, 12 actually, yes. so 12. Uh, your armor is three, so that's going to be a 15 to hit. Uh, so I get a big pool here. You got two defense dice or three defense dice? Three, three defense dice. Three. So nine, three, and seven. You'll cancel my seven. And the nine. And the nine, that's right. So I get a 16 total, uh, which is enough for one hit that you can apply one damage to. I forgot my assistant fire reroll again. I could have rerolled one of those low dice. That's okay. Last, uh, last shot. We're going to do it again. And... Oh, well, I got a crit. I'm gonna roll this two though, and it's gonna become a five. Fifteens, you get rid of nothing, um, and that's enough for two. No, actually, it's only enough for one because that's gonna be sixteen and then thirteen. One, but I can apply it, so I'm gonna apply it to your armor because that was a critical hit. So your yes. armor goes down to two. And Pod Spartan's gonna activate first action. He's going to uh, move and shoot. Okay, so doing a move and shoot, so you can go patrol move, which is six for him. Just right there. Yeah. Right, just right in the building. And going to shoot at that. guessing 12 again, but I could yes. be wrong. Half actually, um, plus three. Uh, so that's going to be 14. Guys, nice, looking for 14s. Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's bad. Two defense. I get oh. nothing. Um, so you get a total of, it's only one hit, but it's yes. critical. So you so, can apply it to my armor? Yes. Sounds good. Armor. I'm going to shoot you back as a reaction because I'm not super excited about getting shot like that again. I'm going to try and reduce something. Uh, so I've got four firepower. It's going to be the same to hit you as it was to hit me. And that means I need 14s. Oh, and that was terrible. Assisted firepower though. There mm. we go. It's a little bit better. So one hit. See if you can cancel anything. You cancel None. nothing. So None. it's only one hit still, um, but it can be played anywhere. Yep. It's gonna go down again to one. Right, and he's shooting me again, so now he's got five dice. Fourteens. This gunfight's not going great for me. Ruh row. All right, two defense. Uh, I'll get rid of your one and I'll cancel your 10. Yep. So 14, that's one total. Put my movement back to three. In action, we're gonna place my scout battle pod on the table. He's gonna go over here with one action remaining. And then he's gonna use that action to actually get him to fire again. So he hasn't activated yet, reactions don't count, and that means that he'll take a shot at you. He's got four firepower. And he's gonna be 14 to eight yet again. Oh, that's a big one. See what you get. No! Uh, nothing. No. Oh no, you cancel my six. Six goes away. Uh, so it's only, it's only one hit now, not two hits, but it is critical, so take another armor. The one melee Spartan left and your reserves. So who's gonna activate? Uh, the uh, melee part. Okay. It's melee Spartan, he's going to move and shoot. He's going to come up around here. Try and save his bro. That's right. He's like, hey, bro. All I right, so half down to two. two. And that's about 14 as well. Mm -hmm. That's a 16. Uh, defense of on that guy right now, two still. 
I'm gonna cancel nothing, oh, so you hit me once. Yes. Movement's going down to two. Now he's already reacted for the turn, so he cannot react to that guy, which means he can just fire at me again if he wants. Yes, and he will pew pew pew. Okay, so you're 14 away. That's right. With just like your friends. Time. Same thing, yep. Oh, no. Actually, sorry, his armor's down now, so you're 13s is what you need. Oh, 13s. Right. Um, and I've got... Cancel the nine, nine so the nine's gone. The three does not get anything, but that'll still add up to 13, exactly. Yep. So you know the point of damage. Yes. All right, we're going to activate him. Last action, we're going to shoot your Spartan here, Gunpod Spartan, try to finish him off. No. So I've got four dice still. I'm almost immobile, but I can still shoot you a whole bunch. I know I'm still 14 away. Uh, what's your defense? Oh, your defense is down to one. Yeah, that's right. So actually, I'm, I'm a little 12 yes. right in here. Okay. Uh, I can reroll a five. I might as well. Oh, that was worse. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go for it. It's all you. <laughs> Kill my five. Bing, bing. And that's it. So yep. is that still yes, 12? It is. it is. So one hit. Everyone infantry arriving next to this token right here in a building, which is going to give them plus three to their um, their difficulty to shoot against them all the time. Uh, and you've got one action left because you flip right. that when you land. Yep. And that's right. All right. Worth noting, we didn't read the fine print. This guardian over here, it didn't make any difference, but he couldn't have shot the turn he arrived because you count as having made a rapid move as your first action. So you could dig in, um, which is probably what you want to do as infantry. Yep, so you're going to be dug in, and we'll stick a dig in counter next to them, and that means that they will be another plus three to, to hurt, which means they're crazy hard to damage. But no showing up and just shooting Super. someone in the rear. So we're going to activate this battle pod. He's going to make a just move and shoot. So he's going to head over to here, staying in cover. He's going to try and shoot at your gun pod. Guys, I need 15s here because he's down to defense one right now. Sorry, armor one. Um, and let's see if we get it. I'm going to reroll that five. That's mm. not going to do it. So I missed. Doesn't matter what you roll. Get you up. So same thing. I need 15s. I'm going to reroll one of these terrible twos. Oh, man. How did it get worse? <laughs> it doesn't even add up no, to 15. It doesn't Suck diddly up, B. You're my least favorite. <laughs> Your officer pot arrives. It's what he does. And he's going to make his move uh, and shoot. So he's going to make a patrol move eight. He's going to fire you with half firepower. This is extended range of minus six. He's 17 away, goes to 11, goes to 12 because your armor won. Um, he's got three dice because he's five rounding up. And that means 12. Well, that's going to do it. Ooh. Got to cancel one of those. Mm. Uh, neither one. No. No, nope. that one hit you once, though. Yes. Um, and you can plant wherever you want. Hold that three. No, it didn't, didn't matter. <laughs> and now movement zero, and that is turn two. So neither of us having one yet. You've still got one, two, three, four elements on the table. Mm -hmm. um, I've n You've not gotten to the point where you have more uh, at the end of a turn. You did eight, didn't you? Oh, you went just one. Yep. And checking the victory conditions, you currently have eight presents on the table, which is more than twice as much as... Um, you started with. So that means that you've won the game um, because I could not get the last armor point off this mech. Now, how banged up is he? He's really banged up. He's, he's taking uh, like eight damage. He's taking three, six, nine damage. He's immobilized. He's immobilized, one defense, one agility. <sighs> ah, the game keeps going because your movement is zero. You are considered ineffective. <laughs> Uh, and that means that um, we will play another turn. You need to get some more points on the table here. It's my last reserve unit. It's going to get a token. Um, you can put tokens on your last reserve units, which are the VF1 and your Spartan. All right, so all of our action tokens are in. This is a big turn. If I don't kill, because you're going to bring two guys on, which is going to put you at 12 presents. If I don't kill three guys this turn, you're going to win. Because you will have more. You'll have eight presents on the table if I don't do it. Now, I'm pretty sure I can pick this kill up, but man, it's going to be hard to kill everybody else. Let's see if we can do it. Oh man, that's not gonna do it. Oh, it's all over to you. Oh, it looks like <laughs> before he dies. So, picking up Gunpod Spartan. He can't move, but he's still got a gun. That's right. He's like, I got a gun, I'm gonna shoot you. Pew, pew, pew. All right, gonna shoot right there. <laughs> Sounds good. Shooting at my tactical battle pod in the open here. Um, we were. I'm still defense. Sorry, I'm still. Uh, and I'm now, sorry, I'm armor agility two, which means you need 14s, now you need 13s. 13. That's right. Because nobody's moved. Yeah. Mm, horrible. And he's defense two. Uh, get rid of a six, so that's yep. gone, and that's it. So you need to add up to 12, which you yep. do, sorry, 13, which yep. you do, so one hit. Reaction time, <laughs> we're, we're gonna murder some dudes, so we're gonna shoot back with him, because it's probably his last gasp. So he's gonna take four firepower into your defense of one, uh, which means I need 12. So to hit, just brawling away here. Oh, it's a crit! Oh, oh, no, this might this get you. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna reroll this two. Oh, no! Well, you canceled that three now, which is handy. Yeah. Um, so I actually don't hit you twice because I rerolled that, and that means one crit, though, and that's yeah. your last armor, and he's destroyed. That is boom. So we have blown him up with a reaction fire. All right, and it's back over to me now. So I 
think we're going to activate Scout Battle Pod, and Scout Battle Pod's going to move as his first action. So he's just going to go eight over to here. And then his second action, he's going to use his CHQ ability to make him fire, because he hasn't activated this, yep. this turn, even though he's gone to reaction fire. So we get a free action to shoot. And his friend, uh, Mr. Melee Pod over here, uh, and he is fire power four. He's still armor three. Fourteen. All right, so fourteens here, four dice. This is fire for reroll. And we'll re-roll the five, I guess. Mm. That was worthwhile. All right, go for it. So you can cancel some of these. You get a six, which will put me down to one hit. Yep. Uh, apply it wherever you like. Dropping the movement on the melee brawler now to two. Melee mech, what's he going to do? He's just going to shoot. Just going to uh, shoot? That sounds like the sound thing to do. Doesn't want to go hide? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, I don't know. He doesn't so, need to hide. He seems... Well, but, but if you just have guys alive, that's oh, all that's you need. that's true. Right? Right. You might as well just go hide. So, yeah, he's... I, oh, actually, you know what? He's going to run. Uh, he's going to run and shoot. Okay. So he's going to rapid move six as his first action. Yeah. And then he's going to assault four into my mech. And we've already measured range, so we know it's in range. Yep. So I could reaction fire right now if I want to. I am about to get charged, so I think I'm going to save it so I can counter charge. He's also going to save it because I think he wants other targets. And charge in, so you stop an inch away. Yeah. I get the opportunity to counter charge, which yeah. I will do. Yeah. And then we pile into each other. Salt rig making him presence three. He gets to roll three dice, picking the highest, and then adding any doubles to it. I get to uh, roll two dice, so I'm P2, and that's it. I get a six is my highest, you get a 12, mm. um, and you didn't get any doubles, nope. so you get a 12, but you did charge, so it's a 13. You're gonna take three damage, because it's half rounding down. I'm gonna take seven damage, half rounding down, because I lost, because you rolled higher, I moved back an inch. I'm damn near destroyed, my movement's zero, my legs are just broke. I'm five power two, I have one armor and jelly left, and I'm defense zero, I've taken 12 damage. So I can't even repair anything unless I roll a crit. <laughs> uh, you, what did you do to yours? I uh, dropped one movement, yep. one firepower, and one defense. All right, so he's a bit beat up, but he's definitely in better shape than I am. It's over to me, officer's gonna go. I'm gonna shoot this guy, I'm gonna shoot him so good. Uh, I think I'm gonna move and shoot him as the first one though. I can move four over to here, whoop. Uh, and that's gonna put me, so negatives become positive. So I'm minus six range, I'm four, five away. So I hit on ones. On ones with three dice, let's see what I can get here. <laughs> hey, look, I hit you three times. <laughs> All right, so what do you cancel? Uh, None. Nothing, so you take oh, three damage, nice. no crits. So oh, three, yeah. three points get distributed. Your movement is one, <laughs> your defense is zero, zero. and firepower. you've got firepower of two, two left. Okay, I'm gonna shoot you again. <laughs> <laughs> now I got five dice. Yeah. This is the targeting. Again, I need ones. I don't know why I rolled your dice too, yeah. but anyway, um, mm -hmm. you just roll two dice off here. Yeah. I don't know if your defense is zero, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah, like... Uh, take five I'm damage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Do you have one, five points left? Yeah. One. Two, three, four, five. Oh yeah. my gosh, you have one box left. <laughs> yeah. How do you have one box left? He literally is just a smoking hulk with one armor box left. Literally the Black Knight from Monty Python. You have no arms or legs. You're just a torso and a head screaming obscenities in my officer pod right here. Uh, I'm going to have uh, these guys shoot at that guy because uh, he's pretty much damaged. So over here, yeah. All right, you're going to shoot him. Yep. Makes sense. So the dug in heavy, or so the dug in airborne infantry. Yep. Armor one, so 11s go to 12s to yep. try to hit me because I've only got one armor left. Crit! I'm pretty sure I'm just dead. I am defense zero. Yeah, I'm defense zero. She just crit me to death. Just got rocketed in the face. I'm gonna fire at him as a second one. Sounds good. So 16, I am in partial cover, so 17, and I am still armor three, so 20. He's gonna get 20 here. He gets the 20. I don't cancel him. I cancel the three, which doesn't matter, so you actually do a point of damage. Trans down to one. Oh, what to do, what to do. All right, so we're gonna bring in a reserve unit. Heavy artillery pod's gonna show up over here because he's done with this guy being a smoking crater. <laughs> his second action, he's just gonna light him up. So he has extended range medium, so he'd be minus 12 to his range. 17, your defense, so your armor's one, so it's gonna yeah. be 18. Minus five, or sorry, minus 12 rather. So six is what I need to hit here with four dice. Sixes! <laughs> I got some! So yeah, you, you exploded. That seems like gross Ooh. overkill, but I didn't finish him off. Over to you, Jan. You got two reserve units left, plus your guardian mode Valkyrie. I have to kill another unit this turn, or I'm going to lose. Guardian's going to go. Yeah, Guardian is... So, moving three, so it's going to patrol. Okay, so he's going to go six, mm. and take a shot. Right there. Okay, I don't know if I can see you. Yeah, I can potentially see you. You're moving and shooting, so use your target for, for the guns. Uh, this one. Okay, so you're gonna shoot him. 16's to hit this guy in partial cover. He's 12 inches away, plus of his um, partial cover from the barricade there. Yep. Um, and he's armor and agility three. So, so 16's. 16's. Mm. 
Mm. What row? Um, so, I, it doesn't matter what I roll. I can't swing at ones though. <laughs> Reaction fire, I need these guys to kill this infantry. He's baiting me. He's trying to get me to shoot this guardian when I need yes. to kill this infantry instead. Uh, since you're over there, well, you, you can still react fire anyway, so yeah. it doesn't matter. But movement, should I, should I trick it a little bit? That sounds like... Mm, I should way. rapid move behind a building. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna do a big shot then into this guy, so he's gonna get his full oh, I dice now. Only two dice that time. That's okay. Yeah. So it now. Full dice now. Yep, you got it. Uh, oh. It'll do it. Sixteen. Uh, no. I. Whoops, sorry, I have two dice here. I don't cancel mm. anything. Uh, that gives you one pull at yes. sixteen, so I'll take a damage. One damage on his movement down to three now, and it's over to me. Do a patrol move and fire with this guy into your infantry. So we're gonna head up to here. See, this is why dug in infantry is terrifying because you've got. Probably 10 inches, plus six, plus whatever your armor and agility is. In this range, I need 18s with two dice. I'm having as I'm moving and firing. Don't get it. And now we're gonna sit still. Four dice, looking for 18s. There's I get a, it, yeah. see what you can cancel. What's your defense? Our defense is two, not three. Three? Yes. All right, so you need to cancel the number here. And you cancel one eight, one eight mm -hmm. and that means it still adds up to 18, because yes, that's 23, does. so. Um, you can take a damage anywhere you want. They're not moving anywhere, so dropping movement at it too. Yep, they're immobile. Um, well, not immobile, but they're not going anywhere. So yeah, dug in infantry. Big pain to try and shift. It's back over to you. You've got your reserves. Yeah. He shows up. Yep, and he's got ex he's got extended range, I believe, yes. medium. So minus medium, twelve. Yeah. And he's not going to move, he's going to shoot. And sniper as well, okay. Yes. So he gets double double damage. 13's at that range, he gets five dice, so, and he has sniper shot, so if he does get a critical, it's just double damage. But you only ever get one hit here. No, no crit. No. Uh, I am defense on that guy currently of one. No. Get rid of your four, <laughs> but that does add up to enough to do a hit. Yeah. Alright, last chance to not lose here. We're going to make a patrol move and fire over to here. Just so we can make sure that we can see this infantry mm -hmm. squad. Boop. Four inches away now, plus six plus one is going to be 11s. Yep. I'm like point blank and I'm still hitting on 11s here, okay. So um, let's do four dice, no it's half dice because I moved. Uh, no. That's not enough, but I can reroll one yes. for assisted fire. That yes. is enough, try and cancel it. I have a defense of three. Six yes. and eight, you kill that and that's nothing. This is game, if I don't kill him right now, he's gonna hold the line. All right, four dice, I gotta get a crit. Come on, crit! Nope, nope. come on, crit! <sighs> it's not even close. All right, so you get your three defense dice, see what you get. Cancel my None. nothing. Yeah. So I do get a total of I need 12s here. I get two hits. You go to zero. They're not going anywhere. <laughs> um, and you can bring in your last model. Which is the do some damage. Right. He's just gonna come up from here. It's gonna be the VF1 in yep. battleoid mode. And, and then he can just fire if he yeah, wants. I think he can. Uh, that's pretty far though. That's like 20. Nine, nine 20. That's it. Oh, well, yeah. you might as well try. Yeah. <laughs> 20 plus three is 23. <laughs> you have four dice. Sorry, three dice. For 23, and of course he does it. So let's see if I, let's see if I can stop it. Uh, no, no, I can't. So he do play and that's that. End of turn. I could not kill that infantry stand. So if you were wondering what one of the most durable things in the game is and why you would take it, dug in infantry are crazy hard to dislodge, um, and that's going to put you with two, four, six, eight presence with the guys on the table. Um, and that is twice your starting presence, which means that you're, you've bought enough time to blunt my assault, you killed one of my battle pods, um, and you've held the line in this, uh, this, is, this attack battle, basically. Although I did, we did mass amounts of damage to each other, he wins the game. All right, so there we go, end of the game. The uh, Zentradi being driven off by the noble USDF. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the, the Earth Defenders did that in the TV show too. <laughs> we did realize we made one mistake. It wasn't really a game-changing mistake though, is that Jan, when he was allocating his damage to his paratroopers, needed to keep th everything above zero. Yes, yes, yes. Because for them to be effective and still be on the table, he mm -hmm. couldn't reduce their movement to zero, or they would no longer be an effective element. So all he had to do was trade one of those points onto their firepower, which was still three, um, and they go from being an ineffective element to an effective element, and the game conditions are the same so learning things but it does mean that allocating damage matters and so does chip damage yes that little plinking way of damage it might seem like you don't need a stat but the victory conditions can mean that if you drop a stat to zero you, you're no longer on yeah. the table you're not considered you're not considered to be there for the win so those little bits and pieces of damage that get applied around they can add up and they can actually affect the victory condition so what it becomes that little thing where uh, all of a sudden you're not only aiming for armor agility during uh, critical hits that's right yeah that, yeah that's you might want to plink to something 
something else, yeah. Because yeah. you might not kill them if they've got three armor agility left, but you could break their legs. And breaking their legs, <laughs> it means that they no longer count for victory conditions, which is huge. So a really clever game mechanic for, um, again, attrition. Um, I felt like every piece mattered. Yes. Uh, I felt like stuff didn't just die, which I liked. Yes, yes. Right? Like, yes. You, you took significant damage, and it altered the game state a lot. Like, your models changed how they operated based upon how damaged they were. Yep. Which is pretty cool. They slowed down or sped up. Yep. The, um, sorry. Yeah, the the melee Spartan, uh, even though it was banged up to uh, half of its movement, yep. it still shined. It yeah. moved. Yeah, it really it shined. It, he knew he couldn't do much with his firepower, and then he said, "I'm just gonna charge." He went ramming speed. And he, <laughs> he that was he it. Went, He's like, oh. he like it, seriously, <laughs> it was it was what was that what, what's that movie where they literally just ram into another ship? It's um, it's it's one of like the oh no, it's it's uh, this that new Star Trek. Remember? This oh, is, what's yeah, his yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. It's Thor. Thor, Thor, yes, Thor, yeah. Thor the new Star Trek. Uh, Kirk Kirk Senior when he just decides <laughs> to ram the ship into the other ship because <laughs> yeah. he can't do anything else. He's like, this thing's way bigger. And it's from the future. I'm not doing anything. Yeah. So he just flies his Enterprise <laughs> into that ship and blows like a big chunk of it. It doesn't kill it, but he definitely damages it. And that was a significant amount of damage that battle pod. It yeah. was left with like literally like three boxes left. Yeah. And then I couldn't kill my officer pod. <laughs> that was so satisfying for you and so frustrating for me. Where it literally was just one box of armor with no guns and no arms and legs. This is but a flesh I was word. so mad. Well, I, it should have occurred to me though. I didn't need to shoot him because he was ineffective. Oh. I wasted a whole round of shooting on him. I could have shot something else instead and made it ineffective. So... It's funny because even just winding the tape back in my head right now from the game we just played, I can see all the things I could have done differently that could have potentially won me the game. Is not obsessing over killing that last guy's hit. There's there's a lot of like learning stuff where um, it seems simple on the surface, but it, there was a lot more to it than I thought there was while I was actually playing the game. So I'm excited. Jay and I are going to play again. Um, you'll see that next week. He's going to unpack his um, no, sorry his his big mech army, his um, Gundam's army, uh, and we're going to fight against. I, I haven't decided. I might just play this entire again because I'm having a lot of fun with them. I think I'm going to play this and try to again. Um, and we'll do some bad guy aliens against some Gundams and see the who would win. Who would have defended Earth better? Was it the Gundam wing or was it the uh, USDF? <laughs> we'll see who's, who, who does it better in that time. So I hope you enjoyed that Let's Play. Check out Horizon Wars if you want um, or if you have a huge pile of mech figures lying around you're not doing anything with uh, and you want a nice easy to pick up game that's infinitely customizable. So so far, we have rules for aircraft, infantry, tanks, all kinds of different elements. Um, it's a real easy game to teach. Jan and I picked it up just tonight. Like yeah. literally, we had never played it before. We played a practice round, and then we just set up and went. And there was nothing really that was that was hard to understand. Like yeah. it was all just dice mechanics and dice pools. And I got, I really felt like, I mean, we were obviously playing two armies that I built, but I really felt like we were playing Robotech. Yeah. <laughs> Like and that was what was cool. Was yes. Stuff was doing what it yes. would do. We had we had we had a Veritech fighter fly over, turn into a guardian, and land on the table. We had some infantry fire in. We had a long range Spartan drop missiles onto someone, like reflex missiles, and it just felt like you were fighting a swarm of yes. of Zentradi because that was what it is. Zentradi swarm in right, and you're outnumbered, you're overwhelmed. Then you send in reinforcements. The heroes come in and save the day. So it was a lot of fun. If you're looking for a great open ended combined arms game um, with flexible scale, flexible rules, you can use any models you want. This is a great, fantastic example of, um, how I put it, uh, indie game mechanics that allow you to basically just have fun with whatever you want to have fun with. So we'll see you for another Let's Play in the future. Tom, then I'm Ash. This is Jan. Hi, boy,